I've built my own power wall. Now it's time to see how the pros do it. Let's get this thing open. I'm excited. So what have we got here today? We've got a brand new Tesla power wall. It's new in box. This is exactly how I received it. There was a listing on Facebook Marketplace saying Tesla Power Wall 1, who wants it? And I said, I want it, you know, what's the price? And they said, I got a message back. They said, come and get it. Two hour round trip from message on Facebook to deliver it back here. We have our own Tesla Power Wall. Now it has been on the bench, I believe for plus five years. And the problem with that is apparently with the research that I've done is means this is bricked and can't be used. So we might have to pull it apart. So what do you reckon? We get this box open, take a look what's inside and see what we got. Let's grab some side cutters. Cover came off pretty quick and easy on the underside. Got some Velcro strips, maybe the side pieces that they clip on. There we go, it comes off. The shiny white exterior cover just lifted straight off and was held on with four screws, two on each side. The cover plate along the bottom was removed and was held on with two T30 screws. That small cover just covers the incoming DC and the data cables. So in here we can see if we have a look, we've got the DC coming in, we've got the DC going into the battery, goes around and back into that plug there, and then we've got the twisted pairs here coming from a plug here into this plug here. I thought I'd just give a quick check, we'll unplug this and just check whether or not we've got any voltage here. I'm assuming there's not going to be any voltage here. I would imagine that there's some sort of contactor. There we go, we've got nothing. I would imagine there's actually a contactor controlled by these wires here inside that shuts the battery down until it's told to turn on. The cooling system all starts here. It draws 12 volts from the battery interface device and then comes around the back and then feeds into the two motors on the right hand side on the bottom of the unit. We've got the spigot that comes out of the bottom of the power wall, branches off into the two pumps. I presume that's for redundancy and then heads up the side around the top. We've got a 12 volt 0.9 amp fan. We've got the radiator behind it with the header tank here where you fill it up and on the side it's got a fluid level as well. Beside the radiator at the top we've got this other device sitting here. Now I can't actually be sure what that is but I'm assuming it's got something to do with venting the battery should that situation arise. To get the hoses off there's just a little clamp here. Press it in with a pair of pointy nose pliers. Slots into that hole there. And there's one, two, three of those and then over here there's one cable tie that you've got to snip and you leave this one in place as it's connected to the radiator and not the actual battery itself the only other thing to note is these two screws here are quite going to be quite difficult to get out without removing this in its entirety so let's get all the screws out and let's get a look of what's inside pull the screws out all the way around as mentioned there's a couple more bigger bolts in the middle there. Uh, and there also looks like there's a thermocouple or a temperature sensor just going underneath here. After about an hour of trial and error, trying not to damage this case too much. Um, we tried a combination of these little mobile phone opening tools. They're thin, they're strong, trying to get along. But of course, there's only so far that you can get before they're ineffective. We can only get them to about there. At the moment we've got a bit of brass rod, um, something relatively soft I guess. Um, it is deforming the metal all the way along and I was really desperately trying hard not to do that. But unfortunately, I think we're going to have to use a little bit of force to get this case off if we want to get this done in a reasonable time frame. If anybody out there knows how to get this off a little bit better, I'll pin the comment up the top. We've actually tried to soften it with IPA and it doesn't soften it at all, so that doesn't have any effect on it. Uh, we've tried heat and that doesn't help. So the only way is brute force for now.
working on this for over an hour and a half, I reckon now, something like that. And I've used the brass bar. Uh, a myriad of different tools, hammers, chisels, and even swear words. So if you like uh, this type of video, feel free. If you haven't already, to hit the subscribe button, smash that like button. Because seriously guys, I can't do this sort of stuff without your support. So for that, thank you very much. We're gonna get this open in the next 10 minutes if it kills me. You can just hear the sealant sort of creeping along, opening up. So far, it's been much like doing a Tesla motor car battery. Just stuck down real well, lots of screws. there guys get in oh yeah seeing this for the first time tesla power wall look at that two tesla modules yeah, quite similar to a tesla motor car with the way it's set up let's take this cover off and have a proper look. We got, what's that? That'll be something with the mounting. We got coolant lines, coolant line there. So we've got a coolant line coming in that side, coolant line coming down into here. Must be a reservoir of some description down there. We've got under here, we've got bus bar. I guess the first thing we do is um, work out whether we've got any voltage or not, just for safety's sake. It's interesting. That one there has got a third wire going to it. Perhaps that's an earth. I'm not sure. Or maybe it's an indication of the plug being plugged in. Uh, we've got a couple of wires there. We've got some decent sized bus bars. We've got the balance, balance leads coming in there. The board looks like it's conformally coated. It's hard to see. I don't want to actually take it apart too much. Oh, that just pops off. So underneath there, lots of different items. Not sure what's there. Hard water lines coming from the soft water lines outside. Um, we've got the little BMS boards down there. Temperature sensors. We'll grab a multimeter and see what the voltage this is. Well, my worst fears have been realized. Unfortunately, what I kind of expected to happen was the BMS would just slowly drain energy out of these batteries over the years until they're dead flat. And unfortunately, that's exactly what's happened. So these are 224 volt batteries, so we should have 48 volts here. Testing one, we get nothing. The meter hardly moves. It, it do, in fact, it doesn't move, it's dead. Go to the second one, nothing. So we should have 48 volts there. Now, unfortunately, I'm sweating so much, I can go on my cheeks and I'm getting more voltage from my body than's coming out of this Tesla Powerwall. After finding out the batteries have got zero volts, um, I won't be removing the batteries from the actual casing itself because I'd actually like to try and revive them on video. So I'm gonna leave the water cooling in place and leave those batteries in place so stay tuned if you want to see whether those two batteries can be revived or not. Okay, so we've got a positive on this side and then we've got negative here. Uh, we've got the negative already taken off here, so we can take this bus bar off. So holding this, this section on here, we've got one, two, three, four T20 screws. And we've got a couple of 10 millimeters down the bottom, little nuts. And we've got another 10 millimeter one here to take off the actual bus bar. Now this all comes off. Now I was thinking that this was a reservoir, as it turns out, this plate here is actually a water cooling plate. So if we take that off there carefully. And taking out the last screw, 
would make it a little less complicated. There we, go. we lift that out. Now we're not disconnecting the water loop, so I'm just going to put it on its side. Now I'm not quite sure what I'm looking at here. The research that I've looked into, this is like a, a 43 volt or 48 volt nominal, something around there, to like 500 volt DC to DC, and it's bi-directional apparently. Now around the back, we can see one of the water lines go into the back plate here. Around the front, it goes in up here. So this entire plate at the back is all water cooled. A big piece of copper down the bottom here, so it transfers some heat to the case as well. And then I would assume that they're transformers of some description there. Two fairly big ones, and it's fairly heavy too. And then two other little devices here, perhaps relays or smoothers or something like that. I won't pretend to know what I'm looking at. I'm trying to show you. Something choke output DC DC SS. Someone there might be able to tell me what they are. But there we go. It's underneath that. The only other thing of interest I see under here is just the water lines, all very neat and tidy. Very, very Tesla, very put away. And then underneath here, we've actually got a date. So it's November the 26th, 2015, by the look of that. So maybe that was the date that was put together. SC might be the person who built the Tesla Powerwall. I'm not altogether sure. Well, there we go, tubers. That concludes my teardown video of this um, Tesla battery. And if you would like to see me see if I can recover those two batteries, stay tuned for that. It'll be in a coming video in the next couple of weeks. I have to work out how I can do that safely. Also, if you'd like any photographs for this, for private use only, I'll be providing on secondlifestorage.com as many photographs from as many different angles as I can. So you guys can have them. If you'd like to use them commercially, just hit me up. We'll work something out. I really hope you enjoyed this video. So thank you very much for tuning in and I'll see you on the next one.